Thank you, Chairman. Um, Secretary, in response to Senator McCaskill's contracting concerns, you said that the best way to avoid these kinds of problems was, quote, having a <coughs> methodical review for every dollar going out. Right. And I couldn't agree more. So I want to ask you about a particular RFP coming up. The, the Pentagon has announced that it intends to bring all of its computing services under one cloud in a $10 billion single award contract. And the department issued an RFI last month, which received over 1,000 questions and comments from industry and leading technology experts who, for the most part, believe that the current proposal is deeply misguided. Yet the department seems to be rushing ahead to issue an RFP in early May and intends to issue an award as early as September. What is the rush here, and why is the Pentagon moving forward so quickly despite the concerns of both Congress and uh, technology leaders? Senator, the rush uh, right now is that we have too many data banks that the frontline commanders cannot swiftly draw information from. So what we have been looking at right now is how do we get faster access for the young folks on the front lines and displaying the information they need, not all the information in the world that clouds what they need. So that is the driving impetus. It's the, lethal, it's the lethality. It is not a sole source and there's no pre-select. But it is a single award. Uh, it will be uh, you know, for small two years for, for about, business, I, I want to say it's around $7 billion dollar contract. It's a the the first contract is uh, a single award. It has a I think a two year base and then yes. some options. Current technology it's a big makes plum. it. That's why I think it, it deserves some attention. I don't want to quibble with you about sole source, um, but I think it deserves some some mm -hmm. oversight. And we included language in the Omni that requires you to submit a full justification for executing a single award, not sole source, single award contract instead of a multi-cloud approach. Are you going to be able to um, submit that justification as required by law, and will it happen before or after the RFP? Uh, we always uh, can, uh, align ourselves with the law, Senator. Uh, we're, uh, when is it going to be brought in? Uh, both reports will actually be submitted at the time the first report is due, so there's only a gap. We're going to get them both in on May 7th, and that will be before Great. the RFP. Fantastic. And so I, to be perfectly clear, there are people speculating that this is tailor-made for a single vendor, and I would just ask you to assure me that those concerns are not justified. Sir, our, our goal is to get the best possible service for the front line. I'm aware that some people in industry uh, perhaps believe that this should be an equal opportunity thing where everybody gets a piece of the pie. Uh, we have got to go forward in a defensible way where you can go to your, your constituent and say they did the right thing ethically as well as legally in order to carry out uh, the best possible uh, support for our frontline troops. If we I, can't I do that... I want to get the then, best deal for the best product for the people who actually use it on the front lines. Yes. Um, I hate to go back to cyber deterrence, but it's an endless topic, so... Uh, General Dumford, Secretary Mattis, uh, we keep hearing from combatant commanders appearing before this committee that we need a cyber doctrine. Um, we hear a common refrain that this, is, this requires a whole-of-government approach, which we've heard so many times that now it's starting to sound like more like it's someone else's job. Um, our adversaries don't see any significant consequences at this point for their cyber actions. And we need to demonstrate an effective, credible deterrent. When are we going to have that national cyber doctrine uh, to address this issue? Uh, we're, I can tell you we're working on it, sir. Inside the Department of Defense, uh, we've got cyber orders out. We've got 130 of 133 cyber teams uh, already manned. There's more training going on. We've got to get in place a persistent cyber training environment to bring them to the top of their game. So we're organizing here for the defend the nation effort, which I think is what you're referring to, Senator. You know we're in support of the, uh, of the obviously, the Secretary of Homeland Security. 
That said, uh, this is a very challenging effort, and I believe that congressional guidance will be necessary as we weigh life and liberty right out of our Constitution. And what role do you want the military to play inside the United States in a defense mode? And I think this is something that you need to lead us on because this is not our normal operating location unless there's, as you know, a forest fire or insurrection. We, we don't do this stuff. We, we stay focused overseas. So I think the more clarity we get from the Congress, uh, the better. And I think we have to work with the executive branch, all of us there, including the uh, Secretary of Treasury, for example, and uh, the uh, Secretary of Energy. There, there, it's a very big issue right now. We're going to have to break it down into bite-sized pieces. Uh, and from the authorities that start here in the spirit of Congress to guide us, we can go forward on this. We need to get started then, Chairman.